All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 132 scale Tiger One Tank by Forces of Valor. And I have all three versions that are available. They're all die cast, super detailed, and each one actually has subtle differences. And I'll be comparing them at the end, so let's make sure you stay tuned to the whole video. But this is the Eastern Front Battle of Kursk. We also have the Eastern Front and the Winter Camo, as well as the North African Camo version here. I also bought a set of the Tiger metal tracks. That way you can see what they look like versus the standard, I believe they're rubber. But anyways, stay tuned. It's gonna be good unboxing. We'll start with the box. This is actually a sleeve that goes over the tank. And as you can tell, Forces of Valor does a really good job with their packaging and artwork. Here's a little information about the Tiger one, early production details, as well as some pictures, which I thought was pretty cool. On the bottom, we have some information just about Forces of Valor Waltersons, and then this is the model number. I'm gonna actually include a link in the video description below where you can purchase it if you want, but besides, nothing really to it, just showing it's 132 scale. So the back, they do a really good job. It actually breaks down what parts are made of die cast, and then also showing you some of the details of the tank, as well as this is the Engine Plus series, all these Tiger tanks are, so what that means is you can actually take the engine out of the tank, which I'll be showing y'all during the review as well. We'll go ahead and take the sleeve off. It comes with a base as well, which is pretty detailed. And there is a background image. I believe it's supposed to be the Battle of Kursk. So if you're someone who likes to display these in the box, I think you'll be super happy with this one. So you open it from the back. There's just this tab here that you pull out and then this whole front piece just opens up like this. And it does come out with the base like that. And I wish you could display it like this. Unfortunately, you can see these plastic pieces that does not look good. And also it doesn't come with the base plate, which I don't even think they make one for this size base yet, which is hopefully something they're gonna do in the future. And then underneath here, yep, there it is. Looks like we have the instruction manual as well as the accessories. So to remove the base, you just pop it out like that. It sounds like you're gonna break it, but you're not. It's got these little tabs that hold it on. And then the tank is actually held on by these four screws here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those off. You also need to remove this strap here, but it does do a good job of holding the tank onto the base while you remove the screws. Then after you get that off, it just has this little plastic cover here and you'll just slide off the front like that. Now we should be able to take the tank off the base and there still are, looks like, yeah, there's still like a little plastic base here too. We need to remove these two screws as well. All right, and once we remove that, you can actually see the Forces of Valor logo on the bottom there. And this bottom piece is plastic, but they still did weather it a little bit. So really impressed with that. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you an up close view of the tank before we add any accessories. It does come with some tow cables and they are real, they're not painted on some sort of rubber, but they do show weathering. This hatch doesn't open. Not sure if that was an escape hatch or not, but these are actually rubber as well, these little pieces here. So the detail is insane on these models. I love how Forces of Valor does this. You can see the exhaust. Let me go around to the side over here. Oh, this hatch opens right there. So the other one doesn't, but I'll show you all the inside here in a little bit as well. Let's see if this hatch opens. Yep, and this top hatch also opens. There you go. Of course, the main hatch should open as well. Like that. And for some reason, this main hatch actually comes off, completely detaches. I don't know if that's so you can get the crew in better, but there's that option. You could probably glue it in if you wanted to. There we go. Tons of detail. This is gonna be where the gun goes. So we're gonna have to actually install that. It's part of the accessories pack. Looks like this may be like an ammo box. There's some tools and then there's a shovel. Set of spare tracks there. And these tracks do move and they move pretty good. The, the suspension works too. You can see each individual wheel move up like that. I think the metal tracks will look really good on this. The turret does move up and down a little bit as well, and it does move around 360 degrees. Look at that clearing. They had some pretty good tooling with this model. The engine door also opens up. They would do this to cool the engine off sometimes, or also work on it. And I believe that these open as well. Y'all yeah, have to look into that a little more once I get the engine out. 
All right, we're gonna take a look at the accessories now and look at this packaging. It even has one of those wax seals and it's raised too, it's not painted on there. It even feels like wax or, or rubber. So whoever's in charge of the Forces of Valor packaging needs a huge raise. I mean, this is, <laughs> it's like part of the experience of unboxing. So let's go ahead and open it up. And then it does come with one of these cards. These cards so far I've seen with every tank of Forces of Valor, it feels like a credit card. It's not flimsy at all. and just has some information about the tank itself and the specific model, some dimensions too. So really cool that they include that. We also have, looks like the instructions here. There we go. It shows how to install some of the pieces that we'll need to, like the tow clevises, some of the lights. Pretty good instructions as well. Color coded. Show you all the pages here. And there you go. All right, and this package looks like we have the tank commander, as well as the steel shafts, and then the side skirts as well. Careful when you open it up. You might want to do it on flat surface, not like me, because sometimes the parts pop out like that. And these are really well detailed as well. They are plastic, but look at that. Has camo to match. Here's some of the side skirts. I'll show you all how to install those in a little bit. Go ahead and take a look at the commander. And this is actually a rubber version or plastic. Uh, the newer versions, the other tanks that I have, are gonna be die-cast commanders. I personally prefer the rubber plastic version better. I just think they look more realistic, but we'll see how the other ones look. I may be surprised. In this pouch, we actually have the toe clevises, the lights, the gun, and then also these little covers that hide the screw holes in the bottom. And here are the two steel shafts, and they are actually metal, that are gonna be installed in the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and take the engine out now and show you what that looks like. And if you wanna do that, do not put these little plastic cover pieces in these slots yet because you'll have a really hard time removing them because there are four screws that we need to take out right now. So once you take these little screws out of the bottom, you should just be able to lift the top off from the bottom like this. And this is heavy, so this is mostly all the die cast parts right here. And then here you can actually see the engine, which I will remove here in a second. But first, I found out what these metal shafts are for. And right here, you can see these two holes. And you see how the track is hanging up pretty high right now, which is not realistic. You're gonna use these shafts to make it look like the track is sagging. So you'll just fit it in that hole right there, slide it through the other hole. But before you push it all the way through, go ahead and push the track down somehow. I'm actually gonna use the other one. See if I can hold it down. And I'm gonna to try to push it down like this while I slide it all the way through. There we go. So you can see it coming through. We'll push it through about to right there. So you can't really tell. But I mean, you'll, you'll be able to see it. It's just, if you want that sagging effect, that's really kind of your only option. So I like that they included it. I have the metal tracks, which I think will naturally sag. But if you don't have the metal tracks, I like that they have this option Okay, so you will also need to line it up with one of those gaps right there. And it's kind of hard to do, to be honest with you. Where is the other hole? There it is. There we go. All right, got it. If you add some weathering effects to this right here, you won't be able to tell as much because they are a little shiny, but that looks pretty good. Looks somewhat realistic now. One of the drawbacks to doing this though, I just wanna point out is that you can't move the tracks now. So the tracks would move freely before, but with those little metal shafts in, you're not gonna be able to do that. To take out the engine, it's actually really easy. You just kinda of wiggle it a little bit. It has this little tab that fits into that slot right there. And with this, for some reason, I don't know why, they didn't include a stand. Maybe it didn't need a stand in real life because it sat on these little posts here, but the other, models of tanks that I review from Force of Hour, like the Sturm Tiger as well as the Shermans, had a stand where you could put the actual engine on and display it 
on the base, like somewhere like that, which I have reviewed those as well. So if you want to watch my videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's got a lot of good detail. I mean, it looks like some rust there as well. It looks like this may be the oil dipstick. I'm not sure if you know, put a message in the comments. These might be some air filters there. So really, really good detail. This is plastic as well. It's not metal. Um, looks like a little metal chain there. It's supposed to be a little metal chain there, but it doesn't matter because the details are amazing. Looks like there might be the oil tank. Super impressed with this as well. So before I put the top back on, I wanted to show you these hatches do open, but they open from the front. And you probably can take the tow cable off, just lift this up a little bit and slide it out. But they do open on both sides as well. So in the little accessories bag, you also have these two little lights here, which will go in this hole here and also that hole there. And all they do is just push down. You could glue them if you wanted to, but you really don't need to. They fit pretty good. There's the first one there. Let me get the second one in. And there we go. Pretty easy to install those. It also came with a gun barrel. Not sure why they didn't install this from the factory, but you will need glue. It'll go in that little hole right there. And I'll just put some glue on the tip and then you're just gonna slide it in because this, this assembly doesn't move at all. It's stationary. You also have four of these toe clevises, which are gonna install here where that hole is, there, and then in the back, right there, and also there. And to install them is really easy. You literally just pop them in. Like that, and then wiggle it a little bit to get to click in place. And this is what it looks like with all four installed. One, two, and then three, four. It also came with two mud flaps, which will just pop on right there and there. Can be a little tricky to get them on. Just gotta put a little pressure to the outside. And there you go, and they do move. Here's what it looks like when they're both installed. So for the side skirt plate armor, they're actually labeled with an L and an R, so you know which side they go on. And then in the instruction manual, it shows you exactly how to install them, starting with L1 from the front to L4 in the back. And obviously L is for the left side of the tank, if you're looking at the front like that. And then L1 is going to go right here, and these little tabs that are sticking out of the tank are going to line up with those slots right there. And it's kind of hard to get on camera, but you're just going to push them down, get them to line up and slide in the slot right there. It actually fits pretty good. So there's L1, L2, same thing. And then sometimes, I know in some of the pictures I've seen of the Tigers, like one slot is missing. I don't know if that's because it just got damaged or if they did it on purpose, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them all on now and then see what it looks like. It's actually a pretty quick process. There we go, there's a the left side complete. And for the right side, it's just the same thing. R1 is going to go in the front. And here's what it looks like with all the side skirt armor on. And just note that some of these you do have to push down a little bit harder. It does feel like it may break the plastic tab sticking out, but they didn't break for me. So looks good. All right. So before I actually install the commander, I wanted to show you this may be why this top hatch comes off because you can see some of the details. Looks like that may be the loading rack in there. And this is actually what the commander stands on. And that kind of looks like a valve. I'm not really sure, but there's not a ton of detail that you can see from this hatch here. I'll also go around to the other side, open up this hatch for you. And you can kind of see the loading rack in there and the gun from the inside, as well as a seat. That's another seat there. And that's pretty much it. This hatch is gonna be the same thing. You, you can put someone in there if you wanted to. They'd probably stand on that seat. All right, and so because they put these little tabs here, there's, there's only one way it'll go on. I wish they did it to where you could actually move this top part here because whenever you open up the hatch, it's only gonna open up to the back and the commander's only gonna be able to go in one way, which is facing to the side. So you're not gonna be able to actually turn him because he won't fit. So that's a little unfortunate. I wish he could be able to turn. In fact, I may at one point shave off these so I can actually turn the little hatch like that so the commander's looking out the front. We'll see. All right, so after taking a closer look at the pictures, these two front hatches also open. It didn't look like they were going to just by looking at them just because the paint looked flush, but 
they do open like this and you can actually even see the periscope there. I mean, there's even detailing on the back of the latch, which is crazy to me. Of course, the Valor did a really good job. I'll even show you all some more. Let me see if I can get this one open here. It's kind of hard to get open to be honest with you, but there you go. And there's another periscope there as well. And then this, I believe is a fogger or the smoke launcher here. And there's one on either side as well. And then in the front, you've got an ax, you have a shovel there, you have some more tools there for I think repairing the track. And then on the front, you have another shovel. And what's cool about this shovel is it actually lifts up like it's it's not attached completely. So if you wanted to, you could probably end up taking that off. So it's not just painted on, it's a real detail. They added that after the fact. Pretty cool. They also did a really good job with the 505 insignia as well. You can see it here on the card. So as I was glancing over this one more time, I noticed another detail, which I thought was really cool. There's actually a jack right there and they made it even look rusted. So attention to detail, amazing on this tank and really all the forces of Valor tanks. Okay, and lastly, I wanted to point out if you do want to use these little rubber covers to hide the screw holes, make sure you refer to the instruction manual because it shows you there's different sizes and where each one goes. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the metal tracks that can be purchased separately. And this is specifically for the Tiger tank. They have some for the Sherman as well. Not sure if there's any other models yet. On the back, it has a little bit of instructions and then also a QR code you can scan. Just slide this piece off here. There's the part number if anybody's interested. And then it comes with, looks like a tool. Get some pieces of the track that we'll need. And then two tracks. And these are actually pretty heavy. I'm gonna open up this one right now. All right, so here's one of the metal tracks. It actually feels kind of like a necklace. So it feels pretty legit. And it has a little bit of weathering on it, some rust in the middle as well. So my box did not come with any instructions. If you want to, that QR code didn't work for me either, but you can go to their website, type in 132 Tiger Tank Metal Track Upgrade. And then if you scroll down here where it says user manual, you'll click on that and then it'll bring you to the instruction page. So if your QR code doesn't work, just try that. All right, so first we're gonna have to remove the old tracks. You'll have to slide, if you have those little pins in there, you'll have to slide those out so that you can get the other track off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And once you get those out, you'll just need to maneuver the track off the front sprockets. Just kind of stretch it out a little bit, kind of like move it as you're coming out like that. Okay, so that actually took me two hands, so I had to pull it off camera for a second, but I just had to peel it off like that. And then you'll be able to just take the track off. I also figured since I had the track off, you could see the wheels a little better and how they all move. And then the suspension, it's got springs on the inside there. Really cool. Okay, so it took me a little bit to figure out how to install these tracks based on the instructions, but I highly recommend removing the side skirts there. And then these tracks only go on one way. You can see on the inside, you have these tabs that stick out. And then on the outside, you see these little tabs right there for the tracks. They are not on the inside. So that's how you know this goes on the outside. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and line up the tracks with the tank but when you do on the back, those little tabs that stick out need to line up on the outside. It's, it's pretty difficult, but they need to line up on the outside right there of this rear wheel right there. So that way you can slide it in. It's a pretty tight fit. And then you're gonna maneuver the track to the front, line it up with the sprocket. Okay, so it took me a little bit of maneuvering, but I finally got the front sprocket to catch the track and you're going to spin it around like that. Take the bottom part of the track, set it on the ground, line the track up correctly, and then you'll take the track itself to the sprocket and see about how much you need. Let's see about like that. So I may need one extra track piece, possibly two. So I'm going to start with one and see how that works. And the extra track pieces are in this little baggie that was in the box, as well as these little bars that you'll stick in to actually hold the track on. So it's kind of like a watch. If you've ever worked on a watch before, 
These pieces are small, so be careful. Okay, so you actually don't need any of the additional track pieces that came with it. What you do is you just line this up, and there's a hole right there. You can barely see it in this track, and also like in this part of the track, like a watch. You just stretch it a little bit until it fits into that groove right there. You can barely tell which piece is which. So once you get the track on, you're gonna take one of those pins that came in that little baggie, and then my finger is right there on the hole for the connected track right there. And then you're just gonna push this pin through and it'll line up all the pieces. I'm not gonna push it through all the way now because I'm gonna add extra track pieces, but that's what you do. You just push it all the way through and it would lock the track in place. All right, so to add extra pieces of the track, we're gonna need our track tool here. And you open up the baggie, you have what they call the track hammer, which will hammer the pins down. And then you have the piece that we're gonna attach the track to. Okay, so the easiest way I found to install this is take the track pieces that you want to install and you'll have the tabs fit into the slots right here. And then go ahead and install it like that and then take your other track with these tabs on the outside and line it up and it'll just sit right on top of the track like that and it'll fit in those holes right there. Then you're gonna go ahead and close this little top piece like that and then right here Oh, on the back side right there. So there's another piece right here that's added on top. That's where you want to put the actual little rod in to your new track. So right here is our new track. So we're going to go ahead and install the rod into the one right before that because that's what's going to hold the track together. And you're just going to push it in like this, kind of wiggle it a little bit. And then once you get it going, push it down as far as you can. And then once it's down like that, you're actually going to flip it over and remove this little piece right there. And then you'll take your little hammer that they give you. And you see the, the little tab is sticking out right there, or the little rod sticking out. You're supposed to take your hammer and just hammer it in like that. The new track is installed. And if it's not staying in there, you can actually take some glue, they say, and glue it to the end of that where that rod sticks out. But this one looks pretty good. Okay, so here it is with the metal track installed, and I left the old track on, or the original track on the right side of the tank, so you could see the difference between the two. The metal track looks much better. I mean, if you don't, if you don't buy the metal track, or you don't want to. I think when you add the little bars that go across that make it look like it's sagging, definitely makes a difference. But um, adding that extra piece of track definitely helped with the sagging. However, I don't know if I'm going to keep it on. Let me zoom in because it's a little loose. So in the back, you kind of have to make sure it stays on. I like the way it looks, just naturally sagging like that. It looks a little more original. And when you roll it, it still rolls pretty good, but it's just a little bit loose. So I may go ahead and remove that extra track I added. So I figured I'd show you all the other boxes as well. This is, of course, the sleeve for the winter camo version. Look at that sheen on the lettering. That's pretty cool. And then this one actually does have a diecast commander, unlike the other tank. And then, of course, there's some information on the top. And then when you open it up, it also has a base, which looks really good, except it looks like it has snow on it. That's pretty cool. And then you also have a winter background. And yeah, this one looks really good displayed as well in the box. And here's the North Africa Tiger Tank box. Of course, this has a sleeve on it as well. And then you can also see the commander on this one's diecast too. On the top, we also have some more information about the Tiger Tank. Then you take the sleeve off. And of course it comes with a base. In the background, you can actually see a desert diorama picture. On the right, you can see a camel <laughs> with some more tiger tanks. So pretty cool. I like this one as well. All right, so here they are, all three fully assembled. And one thing you'll probably notice right from the start is the bases are all the same, except for the winter camo has like painted snow effect and texture to it. But that's the only difference as far as the bases go. We'll start off with the winter camo version first. In the front here, you'll see on the spare tracks, there's actually two bars going across, which you have to actually install that top bar there. And then on the other Eastern front, there's only a bar on the bottom there, not on the top. And then on the North Africa tank, there's no bars or any spare tracks in the front at all. They're actually in the back, which I'll show you when I compare that one. All right, next, looking at the front mud flap, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a diamond pattern there. And if you look at the North Africa version, there's actually more like a checkered pattern on the front. I know it's a little difference, but it's pretty accurate to the actual tank. And then also on the other Eastern front, it's smooth and the actual mud flap or front fender actually comes out a little further. You'll also notice the only tank 
that comes with any sort of tool in the front here is the Eastern front that I unboxed and reviewed, which comes with a shovel. There isn't anything on the North Africa version as well. Another thing you'll notice is there is no side skirt protection on the side of the winter camo version, but there are on the other two tanks. So this next one, I had to do a little bit of research on it because I couldn't figure it out, but you'll notice here there's no front wheel on this wheel hub on the winter tiger tank. And you look at the other two, they actually do have the front wheel there and also there. And the reason I found the research that I came up with was that during the winter, there would be snow, ice, and gunk and debris caught up in this front wheel. It was very common, which would actually incapacitate the tank until they either thawed out or they knocked it loose. You'll also know that this tank also has side storage bins here on both sides, and they do open. You'll also notice these tow cables are a little different than the other two. They come back here to this back door and they hook on on top and the other ones just wrap around the back door here and they're both identical. But on this one, you can actually pop off. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Has a little tab there, let's zoom in. And then you just put it into that hole right there if you wanna lock it in, but to remove it, you just wiggle it out and then this door actually lifts up. Okay, so I was actually able to get this door off so I could show you a little better, but it has these little tabs. You don't have to take it off. You just lift it up like this and it'll stay up but I removed it so it'd be easier to see. But in there you actually have, I don't know what that is, looks like a tank of some sort. And there's also a fan shroud in there, which is hard to tell. I tried to put my light on, I may do a little better, but you can't really see, but there's a little fan in there. And then this may be like a coolant tank or even a fuel tank, I'm not sure. If you know, put a message in the comments. We'll take a look at the commanders now. This one is actually a die cast commander, unlike the first one I unboxed and review, which was like a plastic rubber, but the details on this one are really good. I was actually surprised to be honest with you. I didn't expect much because I feel like die cast would be a lot harder to mold and especially with the details, but definitely impressed with that one. Same with the African Tiger Tank. This one actually is die cast as well. So again, really, really impressed with the details. So. I still don't really think it's necessary if I'm honest with you because if you look at the one I unbox and review which is like a resin or plastic, I feel like this one looks plenty good and you're not gonna know the difference. It's also lighter. You can move it, manipulate it a little bit. So like if you wanted to move the arm, you can do that. But on the die cast ones, you really can't. We'll take a look at the back of the tanks now. One thing you notice right here is these exhaust stacks are a lot taller than the other two. And I'll show you something else. If you take a look right here, you'll see these vents in the exhaust. And the reason they did that was in the winter, sometimes flames would shoot out the top of the exhaust and it would give their position away. So they just added extra length to the exhaust stacks and then put those vents to dissipate the flame. You'll also see this little box here. I don't know if it's an ammo crate. There's another box here. And then these rear mud flaps don't move. They're actually even shorter than the other ones. And then here, of course, is your jack right there. And then I'm not sure what this is. I think this may be the crank to start the tank. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it's actually a different angle than the other two as well. So moving on to this one, one thing you'll notice right away is it does actually have filters on the top here with these little tubes or pipes going into the engine. And then you'll see it has exhaust heat shields. And look at the detail they did on the top of the exhaust, those little flaps, that's pretty cool. And then the mud flaps on this move like I showed you in the unboxing. And then there is the actual jack. And then this is the, uh, like I said, maybe the engine crank that's sideways. So it's actually a different position than the other one. So taking a look at the North Africa version, you'll see some differences too. This is actually a sand filtration system, I believe. And then also the heat shields are a different, looks like a different shape. Let me see if I can zoom in there. They're more squared off on the edges here with some vents in the side right there as well. And then the mud flaps are longer. They come out to here versus like right here and they don't move either. Underneath on the bottom, you'll actually see the additional spare tracks instead of on the front. And then there's the jack. That's the same spot as the one I just showed you. And also on these two tanks, the North Africa and the Eastern Front, they have these little back storage bins, I believe they were. On the turret, they removed the escape hatch on this one. It is on this one right here, but it's not on this one either. The lights are also in a different spot in the North Africa version. You can see they're right here on the bottom section versus up top. Like in this model here, you can see the lights and also on the winter camo where you can see the lights there. Another subtle difference you'll see here, if you look at the turret, you see these two little dots. There's no extra steel or protection there. If you take a look at this one, they added extra steel for protection. And then on the winter camo, you'll actually see there's a tab on top there. So not sure what that one was for, but super cool that they added those details. Here's just a quick view of the winter camo version, just in case you like this one and you may want to get it. 
turn it around here. I already showed you the back pretty good. Here's the other side. And I did install those little bars going across to make it look like the tracks were sagging as well. Really like that they included that. Some of the tools are also different spots on these tanks. So if you want to look at that later, you can, but really like the details. Here's a quick look at the North African version. I didn't think I'd like this one as much as I actually do. I, I'm glad I got all three of them. I almost didn't, but I'm glad I did. So that way I could show you all to review all three of them together. That way you could see the differences because I was shocked to find how many subtle differences there actually were and all the information that was included. Let me know which one you guys like in the comments below. I'm curious to know which one y'all want to purchase or which one you just like in general. I'll put some links to purchase below in the video as well. And once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of other cool content if you want to check out my videos. I also have some more cool stuff coming up soon. I have a lot of things in the works to review. So really excited. Got planes, tanks of modern era, also World War II, Vietnam, all that good stuff. So check out my channel and I appreciate it.